can you please make a case for both ideologies by providing an example for each? Please discuss a time in your life where you are relieved to know that you led with your heart over your head. And when finished, if you can also provide an example in your life where you were relieved to know that you led with your head over your heart. Well, mom spent a month and a half going through agony with different sicknesses, you know, uh, four brain tumors. She lost her leg, you know, to a uh, vascular disease. Um, I talked to my brother and sister and we all agreed that we should, you know, tell her if she needs to go home, she needs, needs to go. Um, my head didn't want to do it. And to me, that was being very, very selfish, you know, and getting wisdom for it. My mom, for me, was my everything. She saved my, you know, my life. I'm 31 years sober because of my mom. For me to let her go and tell her to go ahead and go was probably the toughest thing that I ever had to do. Um, my, my mind didn't want to do it. My brain did not want to tell her that because I wanted to be, I was, it was, I was being selfish. I know that, but my heart knew that someone going through that much pain deserves to move forward. And, um, you know, the interesting part about it was when I told my mom that very day, I told her, um, you know, if you want to go see your mom, if you want to go see your grandmother, your brothers, your brothers, go ahead and go mom. It's taking me a while emotionally to get through that, you know, and you know, there's been other times in my life also where, you know, I knew that I was doing something wrong. My heart was telling me not to do it. My brain wanted that satisfaction, you know, of, of doing what I want to do. When God speaks to my heart, my heart always ends up doing the right thing. When the devil tricks me in my brain and tells me, oh, you can do this or you don't need to do that. Don't listen to them. You know, I end up making mistakes because my brain can be selfish. My brain's not thinking about the overall picture. So I really believe that for me, the heart leads us the right way and so, and some uh, most of the time our brain will lead us astray the fact that you're able to really kind of teach us about who she was as a human being like that's her lasting legacy because we know her name oh, now. Yeah. And, and through your stories and recollections of who she was as a human being that keeps her spirit alive and i, I want to thank you for that brother because again at the end of the day uh, much of who we are is because of our parents personally i'm going to agree with todd here um i feel like uh you know so my role currently and you know in baseball as a reliever is i guess you could characterize as a swiss army knife um i want to be available as often as possible and throw whenever i need to throw um i think one specific um you know life experience for me is uh you know i talked about my brother and you know the first um the first first round that i was on here you know he felt something in his shoulder again and he didn't know if he wanted to continue to play you know, my heart led me to tell him that, you know, God puts you in certain situations, right? He tests you. He puts you through your trials and tribulations. God putting him through all of these trials and tribu tribulations through his injuries is what allowed him to come out on the other side, get drafted, you know, ready to hang it up. He was tired mentally of battling back from injuries and whatnot. Um, you know, I, I told him, I was like, look, you just have to continue to move forward through whatever God puts in your way. And at the end of the day, he's going to reward you. Um, and, you know, you have to be a testament. I think a lot of what I've learned, you know, playing is if you can reach to one person and make a positive impact to one person that's, you know, watching my game or to one person that's watching his game or, you know, whatever it may be, if you can positively impact one person in that crowd or one person on that's watching the game on TV, then you've done your job for that day. When I lead with my heart, we talk about in baseball, throwing each pitch with intent and throwing it with conviction. When I lead with my heart in everything that I do in life, I feel like I'm doing it with intent. I'm doing it with intention. So I got out of the ring and I'm making a decision. Am I, do I want to go at the teaching? Do I want to go into coaching? I wanted to do that, but I've been volunteering and doing that. But what I really wanted to do, I wanted to get back saved in, in my business. I wanted to be one of the decision makers. So, and, and so there was this kid out there, he had a 275 pounder. So I go, I go to this tournament and I'm sitting there and I'm hearing all these coaches, Briscoe, you ought to talk to this guy. Briscoe, you ought to talk to this guy. All of a sudden, this kid comes up to me. He's five foot seven. He got long red hair and he got pimples all over his face. And he's one of these dumpy little guys that you see all on the street. And I'm like, man, you're not WWE material, but I'm not telling him that. I'm not going to destroy his, his dream because that's what he dreamt about all of his life. This guy does not fit any of the qualifications that 
that I'm looking for except one. This kid has the best personality I've ever seen in my life. He's laughing all the time. He's smiling all the time. And when you go and you're kind of looking around for talent and everything in my business too, you want to see how the other kids are reacting to this guy. And every time I'd look over and look at this guy, he would have dozens of other kids around him. That means he's a leader. That means he's got a personality. He said, man, this guy got the desire. He showed me for four years. He tracked me down every tournament that I've gone to. He has that passion. He has that devotion. And he has that incentive that, that you know what, I'm going to make it in this business. I don't care what they say about it. Either. He outlasted every one of them. So he, you know, he, he knew he had the heart. You he knew he had that heart to, to, to do what he wanted to do. So two minute promo. Have you ever tried that? Just somebody throw a question. All right, two minutes. Give me two minutes. It makes sense. And so he he didn't do real good on that. I got to tell you the truth. Said, do you have any other skills? And, and he said, I don't know what you mean. I said, well, I heard you telling some people you can dance. Can you dance? He said, no, but I can do the work. Here's this 285 pound guy. I said, do the warm for you. So he goes down, he does the warm, and he comes up with a big smile on it. He does it perfect. And everybody gives him a applause. That man, he made it. He made it. And sure enough, he turned out to be Otis, uh, of WWE, one of the biggest superstars now. And a, and a wide philosopher told me, I'll end with that. A wide philosopher told me one time, Briscoe, when it comes to love and romance, trust your heart. When it comes to money, trust your brain. So I've lived by that advice all my life. That's Bryce, it. should an NFL team be required to sit out a player and or place them on the IR if they're dealing with mental health issues, or is it too much of a gray area due to the lack of anonymity? Whenever you're ready, good sir, the floor is yours. Mental health is such a very tough um, topic because it's, it's you can't put a number on it, right? You can't measure it. You can't. It's not like if you have the flu, you're going to probably know because you have a fever, right? You're t- My answer to the question, should a NFL team be required to, you know, sit out a player for mental health issues? My simple answer is yes, because, man, you never know what that certain individual or that player is going through, right? The self-confidence, the self-esteem is such an interesting and like it's hard to put a, a number on or measure, um, which is like in baseball today, everything's measured with numbers. And I think that, you know, I think that organizations should do a better job of supplying outlets or supplying resources to combat mental health and resources that these athletes feel comfortable going to. Right, but I think players associations should provide resources outside of the teams so that players feel more comfortable, you know, going to these uh, these resources and the team not judging them based off of mm-hmm. their, you know, what they're going through, right? And like athletes are, we're still people. Like we still have our own lives. Yes, we get to play a sport for a living, right? And I, I will never take that for granted. I love it with everything that I have. But at the end of the day, we still work for a business and we work for a company, right? It's still my job. And the mental toll that it all takes is, is extraordinary. And just to, it took me a while to really, me personally, it took me a while to use the resources that were available to me. And once I did, um, it, it helped tremendously. But just open up about it, right? Don't sit there and go home and just let it just take a toll because it only compounds. Um, and I, that's, that's yeah, I guess that's yeah. my answer. The courage that it takes for a player or, 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 or a coach or an individual to step forward and say, guys, I need help is, is just insurmountable. I, but the, my, my answer to the question is, yes, I think it do. I, I think uh, that team does have a right to shelf somebody. And But number two, uh, you look on the legal aspect of it, which is none of us have brought up, the, the legality of this thing. If a, the player saying, you know, he needs help, all right, I got the help. Now let me back on the team. Well, no, we don't want to take a chance or a corporate, a corporate uh, corporation where you're working uh, as a salesman or something like that. Hey, I, I'm, I'm okay to see clients now. Well, are you sure? And then that doubt, is it going to 
prohibit you from advancing in your career, not only in sports, but, but in everyday life. And coming forward, it takes so much courage to come forward and say, yeah, I need help because you know all those barriers that's going to be in front of you as you're trying to return to it. So that, that's the downside of it. But I, I am a firm believer that and if I'm invested in, in, in a person, I expect the best out of it, not only physically, but mentally. 24 7 and, and if they're suffering from some type of of illness whether it be mental illness or or, or a common cold you're not going to get the best out of them everyone wants to look at the persona everyone wants to look at the gerald briscoe hall of fame ring everybody wants to look at bryce williams amazing bryce wilson's amazing pitch everybody wants to look at todd bridge's incredible film and tv resume but you know we they forget you're still on that plane you're still having a cold or a flu you have to get through uh you're still trying to find a gym when it's 4 a.m. and the only thing open is Waffle House, when you're in Gerald Briscoe's case in his prime, and you don't get to see Paris, France, even though you're there. You don't get to see those cities. You get to see a gym, if you're lucky, at Denny's and your hotel bed, and then the arena, and that's it. Lather, rinse, repeat all over again. So you guys know what that's like, and I'm glad you're delving into this the way that you are. Uh, should the NFL be able to do that? I think yes, but with great caution, because they may use that to their advantage to also get it, you know, get ahead on a guy when it comes to he's making his money. You know how management works. You know, management will use anything they can to get that edge, but should the NFL be able to do it? I think if he's diagnosed properly and he goes through the proper channels, yes. You know, um, I remember my mom telling me in the very beginning that you know you should go see somebody, a psychiatrist. I was like, are you kidding me? This is the 80s, people think I'm nuts if I go see a psychiatrist. You know, nowadays you're applauded for him. You're welcome, to, yes. You're gonna see a therapist, oh my God. You are so blessed. Way to go, man. Sometimes, you know, I've learned there's a right way to speak up and a wrong way to speak up. Always have yeah. your agent speak up. You never speak up. Always you can go when they say, man, what's wrong with your agent? Man, I don't know. He's tough, man. He's tough on me. Blame him. Because when you blame him, they can't go after you or hurt you for it. You know, management can always find a way to hog ties, pay us a little bit of money, not what we're, not what we're actually worth. You know, I give a good example is um, Saquon Barkley. He went to Philly, which is my team, by the way. And, you know, he <laughs> he played them and he was running all over them. And it's like, and I remember watching the owner say, if he goes to Philly, I'm going to be sick. Well, I guarantee you after this weekend, he was quite sick. But that's why, you know, it's like they don't want to have to pay a person. No matter how much they know how good he is, it just kills them to have to squeeze out a little more money, you know. And the first of two tonight to advance to oh. round number three. Well done, Mr. Bridges. Uh, WWE Hall of Famer Gerald Briscoe and current MLB star Bryce Wilson will have a tiebreaker match to determine who moves on to round number three. It is official.